Macedonia. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is also the day that has been set aside to honor our mothers. So on behalf of the women's ministry, I would like to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a very happy Mother's Day. We love you. We can't wait to get together and fellowship with you again. God bless you.
of the goodness of Jesus and everything that he has done. Your soul will cry out hallelujah and make her boast in the Lord. Oh God, we came to give you thanks. There's nobody else like you. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, give thanks. For he is good. Oh, oh, give thanks. For he is good. opportunity to be. Father, we ask that you, Lord, continue to watch over us and keep us during these times in which we are living in. Father, we ask that you bless your preach word on today, Father, that someone may come asking the question, what must I do to be saved? Father, hide me behind the cross, speak for me, speak through me, but most of all, use me in the mighty name of Jesus. For this, Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank God for another day's journey, for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. We thank him for even in the land of the dying, God is still allowing us to live. The old songwriters used to say, he didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. To all of God's preachers, deacons, officers, members, and friends, I still greet you in the mighty name of Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. To all of our wonderful and incredible mothers and 
to all the mothers on this Mother's Day who have mothered me. I want to take time to say thank you since the Lord called my mom home some 15 years ago. I want to say thank you to all the mothers that have taken me in as their own. God takes care of his. To all of the mothers, my wonderful wife and mother, Nicole Williams, for being an incredible mother and wife, happy Mother's Day. During these times of this incredible pandemic, which is scientifically defined as a new virus that emerges to infect people without no pre-existing immunity against. Known as the coronavirus or COVID-19, as we have dealt with this for the last few months, I ask God for a word for his people. Without delay, coming from the book of 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter and the 14th verse, where it reads, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. A word or thought or subject for the day, God's required condition. One of the most widely quoted scriptures in the Bible, but seldom expounded upon, is that of 2 Chronicles 7.14, where they ask or they talk about my people. They talk about pray. They even talk about then will I hear from heaven. But rarely do you hear an expounding word upon the biggest two-letter word in the Bible where God requires a prerequisite or it required a required condition known as the word if. In other words, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. And if we as God's people want to fulfill God's required conditions, we must fulfill what God requires first. First of all, to fulfill God's required condition first, the Bible says, then will we hear from our Father which are in heaven. Even when we look at this text, a verse that includes 40 words, yet the biggest Word of all of these 40 words is the two-letter word, if, which normally means there is a requirement or a prerequisite from us as God's people if we want God to answer our prayer. The scripture starts out by saying, if, that means that your request is a possibility. Then the scripture says, my people, that makes us our relationship with God personal. And then it says, which are called by my name, that makes it paternal, which is defined in the adjective, that being appropriate to a father, one who shows kindness and care associated with being a father. Then it goes on to say, shall humble themselves, that means preparation. You see, you can do all of this talking that you want, but unless you humble yourself and prepare yourselves in your prayer, the question must be asked, who's hearing your prayer? When we say, when we talk about my people, it makes it personal. And so therefore, it makes a difference that we don't just show up to church on Sunday and when the church doors are closed, we don't know who God is. God in our relationship with him must be a personal relationship. So even in the last couple of months when the church doors have been closed, we should still, as his children, be able to walk with God. Are you following me? When we, as God's people, are seeking him first, 
we will understand that it is imperative that we be obedient to his requirements. When the scripture starts out by saying if, that lets us know that it is a possibility. When the scripture says my people, that makes it personal, our interpersonal relationship with God. Then when it says which are called by my name, that makes it fraternal because not just anybody can call me daddy or their father, but my children have that right because I am their biological father. Here we look in the Bible and it says, the Bible in God's requirement, it says, shall humble themselves. That means preparation. In other words, when we look at humble ourselves, that means we have to put our heart in the right place for God to be able to use us and hear our prayer. You can't just come to God with any kind of thought, any kind of feeling and expect God to hear our prayer. So he says, shall humble themselves. That means preparation. We can sanitize our hands all that we want, but if we don't sanitize our heart during this pandemic, then who are you talking to? Then we look at the word of God and it tells us and pray. That means power because when you can talk to a God that still hears and answers prayer, then you know without a shadow of a doubt where your help and your power comes from. Have I got a witness? And then it says, and seek my faith. It is a privilege to be able to have a God that we can call on and that we can serve. Have I got a witness? And then it goes on to say, and turn from your wicked ways. That's one of those godly conditions that says you can't just keep living the way you want to, doing whatever you want to, thinking whatever way you want to, and expect God to hear your prayer. It makes a difference how you live. Thus, we must turn from our wicked ways. That's God's required procedure. Then God responds, then will I hear from heaven. That's the progress. And forgive their sin, that's the pardon. And heal their land, that's God's prosperity. The scripture starts out with the word if. Here is the word if is God using a conditional conjunction. In other words, in paraphrasing, if we as God's people do what we're supposed to do, he as God is always going to do what he's going to do. Are you following me? Let us look at some of the other ifs throughout the word of God. As we look back in scriptures, I now understand that now that I'm in my 50s, I understand now when the elders used to say, if it be the Lord's will, I will see you on next Sunday. I, I, I'm beginning to learn now that this moment, this hour, this second is all we have. The next minute and the next hour is only if it be God's will. In other words, we as believers can't just be rewarded with God's promises and forget God's required principles. Are you following me? In Matthew 16, 24, Jesus says, if any man is to come after me, let him first take up his cross and follow me. But it says, if in the first place. John 12, 32 tells us, if I be lifted up, John 15 and 7 says, if you abide in me and my word in you, ask what you will and it shall be given to you. Then in Romans 10 and 9, it says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But the required condition is still if. That reminds me of a story. During this epidemic, we've seen things unever seen and never thought of by this generation. 
But if God's people ever needed to pray, we need to pray now. But part of God's requirement is not just asking, but establishing and reestablishing and recommitting our lives to him. Because as we can uh, look back over the last couple of months, the way life was yesterday will no longer be the same today. God wants some quality time. That's why he says, if my people. When you know you are God's people, that doesn't mean just anybody. I understand and I respect the job of the CDC and Capitol Hill, but God says in his word, if my people shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will he hear from heaven and he'll forgive our sins and heal our land. When we pray. God wants us to seek him first. That reminds me of a story between a father who was well off and a son. One day this father walked up to his son and he was 16, 17 years old and he asked the question. He said, Daddy, I got my license now. Can I drive your car tonight? And the father thought about it and said, well, sure, son, you can use my car. Then the son comes back a few moments later and said, Daddy, I ain't got no money for gas and to hang out with my friends. Can I have some money to go in my pocket? And Daddy thought about it and said, well, sure, son, here you go. That was his son because he loved him. He was able to give him the car and the money. But then the father had a question for the son. The father says, well, son, do you want me to go with you? And the son says, no, daddy, I'm good. It's just going to be me and my friends. Sometimes we treat God the same way. We want the benefits of God and we want the blessings of God, but we don't want to spend no quality time with God. God wants us to be his father. Wants to be our father. Excuse me. And in being our father, we have to establish a personal relationship with him. Nobody has to tell me who my father is. I speak to him on a weekly basis. Why? Because he's my father. But I speak to my heavenly father on a daily basis where I can talk to him and he can talk to me. If we remember nothing else during this pandemic... We serve a God as believers, as God's people, that we serve a God that still hears and answers prayer. And because we serve a God that still hears and answers prayer, he's still true to his word. He says in his word, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, in other words, and seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. See that's God's conditional requirement. God wants to bless us. God wants to heal us. But God also wants us to turn to him. In times like these. Don't forget. God that we serve. Is still an on time God. A prayer hearing God. And a prayer answering God. And he's told us in his word today, if we turn from our wicked way, seek his face, then will he hear from heaven and he will heal our land. Our God, he still sits on high and he still looks down low. This pandemic, this coronavirus where over 260 something thousand people have died worldwide. Over 27,000 in the state of New York alone. Yet God has still blessed us to be alive in the land of the dying. When we put God first, God will watch over you. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you.